Join me right now on Kumite TV is Eternal MMA Featherweight, Jaden Benny. What's going on, Jaden? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. No doubt, no doubt, man. Um, first of all, you know, I want to know who is Jaden Benny. Talk about yourself a little bit. Where are you from? You know, where you grew up, things like that. I grew up in Townsville, actually. Uh moved to Brisbane when I was pretty young. Uh, I didn't really start training martial arts until I was about 15. Uh, so a lot of the guys in my division, I think they started a lot younger than me. Uh, the guys were my age, at least. You know, I think I, uh, for my age right now, I'm at like a late start compared to a couple of the other younger guys. But I uh, started when I was 15. I fell in love with it immediately. So since like my first day of training, it's been multiple sessions a day every single day as much as I possibly could until right now before the age of 15 you know what sports were you uh, into uh nothing I was absolutely terrible at everything martial arts is the only sport uh, I've had any success with I'm terrible at team sports uh football soccer everything I'm uh horrible did you start with MMA or was it some other martial art that got you into it Jiu-jitsu is what I started with. Um, jiu-jitsu is what got me into MMA. Uh, I I did like my first jiu-jitsu class at a PCYC, uh, and uh, I loved it like straight away. We we at PCYC we only got to do like five minutes rolling for a ninety-minute session, and uh, I I just go for the five minutes. <laughs> the five minutes rolling was all I cared about. Uh, so I went from there to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, trained that pretty seriously, took it seriously for a few years, and now I've moved to MMA, and this is my new new focus. During that transition from jiu-jitsu to full full blast MMA, you know that's what I like to call it, full blast, because that's what it is. <laughs> you know um, how was, yeah. how hard was it on you? You know, doing that because it's not an easy transform. You know, it's not an easy transition. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It it was actually um kind of hard for me. I've, Whatever I do, I, I want to be the best at it, really. Um, and obviously, like I told everyone, oh, one, one day I'm going to be a, like, I'll be a jiu-jitsu world champion, you know? And that was the goal. Everyone knew that was the goal. That's what I told all my friends and my family. So it was a bit weird at first. It was kind of hard because um, I didn't really have the same passion for jiu-jitsu after a while. Uh, you know, my friends and family like, oh, you, you've been talking about it. you're going to be a champion in jiu-jitsu for so long. And now that's out the window. Um, so it was actually a little bit difficult at first, uh, but you know, I, I love MMA now. That's what I like. Uh, I've accepted that. So the goals changed, uh, my directions changed and that's my full-time focus. No doubt. Well, let's talk about your last fight, you know, eternal MMA 42 at the end of yes. March, you dropped the decision, you know, take me through that fight and, uh, your thoughts on the decision. It... Obviously, if you watch a replay, you know, like on the night, uh, I was upset. But after I watched it, um, I don't think it was unreasonable. I got a lot of messages and a lot of support. People telling me like, "Ah, you got robbed, this and that." Um, but I, in my opinion, I didn't. You know, when I watched it back, I don't think I got robbed. I think it could have gone either way. Uh, there was good things from me. There was there was good things from Hawani. He. He played it smart, and and he played a game that is more favorable to um, MMA judges. You know, you fight your opponent, but you're you're also fighting the judges and the rule set. You know, no matter what compete like what sport you're doing. So he he won. He played it smarter, and he won. That's that's fair enough. Going through that, you know, decision loss. A lot of people are telling you that you won, and you know. You, you were very emotional on the night, and then you go back, you watch it, your mind changes a little bit. What did you learn from that fight? Uh, I, I learned heaps, heaps from that fight. That was probably my most valuable fight so far, especially for my coaches um, after we had some time to reflect on it. Um, technically, I learned heaps, but also just uh, my mindset, you know, and uh, how I approach the fight. I think because of it, what everyone will see on the 27th will be very different to what they're expecting. You know, um, what I've learned from that loss, I think, I think will change, change my game a lot. What we've been working, uh, in the gym is, is going to show like a very different Jaden to what's been 
what what everyone's seen before. Well, you're turning pro, you know, in your next fight. Why did you decide to turn pro now? Not yet, not yet. I'm I'm not going pro for a little while. Um. Oh really? Yeah, no, I thought not, this was your pro yeah. debut. No. Nah. Oh, I'm nah, confused. Nah. No, I want to stay uh, am- amateur as long as I can. I want to get as okay. much uh, experience as I can. That's the goal. All right. Well, you know your next fight, right? It's uh, you're opening the main card. You know, is there uh, yes some pressure on on you to entertain because you're in that slot? Yeah, yeah, man. I, I never want to be boring. You know, I want I want people to enjoy watching my fights. Um, sometimes I think not always, but sometimes I think uh, people who are grapple heavy can can uh can sometimes have boring fights you know they can they know they can win by grinding someone out and the fight might not be as entertaining because there's no like um one punch knockouts you know no vicious tkos uh but i I do want to make it entertaining absolutely everyone pays money to come see family and friends pay money to come watch so you want to put on a show uh so absolutely you're taking on rob pele you know thoughts on him and how he stacks up against you on paper, I think obviously I'm the favorite uh, based on his record. I've watched his fights. He can uh, – I don't, I don't want to go bad-mouthing him. I think I think what he's got on his side is it looks like he can wrestle a bit. He can chain wrestle. That's fine with me. I love to wrestle. Um, I think I think I'm a better striker. I, I know I'm a better striker. Uh, I haven't had much chance to use that before because uh, I haven't been developing it as much, but – it's starting to come together now, so I think uh, I can beat him everywhere, and I'll I'll prove it. Twenty seventh, I'll show it wherever it goes. Uh, stand up, grapple. I think I'll be better everywhere. In your preparations for this fight, you know, are you full time or do you have a job outside of MMA? No, everything I do is uh, in the gym. If if I'm working, I teach uh, kids jujitsu. I teach jujitsu. Um, Everything I do is inside the gym, and yeah, training is as much as I possibly can. Um, I don't even I don't bother counting the hours anymore. It's, it's too much. If you can count them, it's probably not enough, right? So, uh, yeah, full full time. Not I don't do anything outside of of martial arts. Are you at the point where you have kind of like a set schedule, or like you just said, are you just training as much as you can? Uh, as much as I can. Um. I try and follow a schedule. I think everyone does. And then you meet new people, you're doing rounds here, doing rounds there. Um, you know, teammates might have fights that you want to help support them with. So I do like to try and have a schedule. I never stick to it. It always ends up by the end of the camp. It's a little bit all over the show. Uh, but as long as I'm getting the hours in and the work in, uh, I, it doesn't doesn't concern me. I feel very ready who you know are your main coaches that help you get ready for this fight yeah, right now um elliot elliot compton and uh steve compton they're the ones uh uh they've helped me so much ever since i started training with them they've like completely changed my um my mindset and my outlook on how how i should be fighting and what my goal should be they've uh They've made it very clear what I should be doing and what my path to success will be when I'm fighting. So uh, them right now is the greatest influence that's uh, on on my style right now, at least, for sure. Yeah, how is it getting in rounds with uh, Elliot Copter? You know? <laughs> he's, uh, he's a very high-level striker. You know, He is a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. On top of that, uh, a legit, legit fighter. Yeah, um, yeah, he he beats my ass quite re- quite regularly. Uh, but that that's what I love about training there. When I go to uh, go to train on uh, on those sessions, I I walk in um, and I'm like the worst person in the room every, every session, which uh, I see as a blessing. I I think that's something that you will never really have as you keep advancing. There will generally be people like who are worse than you. But right now, that's me. I'm the I'm the worst person in the room. Everyone else is a pro. They've had multitude of fights. Uh, so it's great. You know, I'm learning every single round. I'm learning. Um, yeah, I, I think, like, my improvement has just been, like, um, skyrocketing, training with them. Are you getting work with, like, Damian Brown? And, you know, I think uh, – who else goes out there? Um, man, it's 
names are slipping my mind. Damon Brown, uh, man, Aaron, uh, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Blackie. Blackie, Stewie, Stuart yes. Nickel. Um, he just won the XFC Pro Flyweight title. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, all of those guys get to spar oh. with all of those guys. Um, yeah, they all they all beat me up many times a week. Um, which I love. It's awesome. I think it's a blessing, you know. Like I'm a. Uh, these guys are the ones who've like been training for forever. They've fought in multiple organizations, super experienced pros. I'm the amateur walking in and they they let me train with them. They take it serious. You know, they, they help me out. They give me advice. So uh, I, I couldn't be happier. Man, you're in such a good position right now. You know, you're, you're young, you know, you have that yeah. fire and you got such a great group around you to kind of mold you into the fighter that you need to be. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a, it's a massive blessing. I think uh, I've been put. I'm I'm very lucky. Like I'm in a position that a lot of other people uh, don't have. The people around me, I have, uh, and even outside of those guys, there's so many um, people who support me. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, compared to everyone else my age, you know, who's getting into MMA, I think I've definitely got the uh, the best uh, team and the best group you know, which has given me the highest chance of success. I just got to do the work really and, and stay focused. And uh, I think I can, I can be the best for sure. You know, what is your short term and long term goals? How long do you plan on staying an amateur? Uh, I just want to be experienced. You know, I, I want to, uh, this might be an unrealistic goal, but I want to walk into my first pro fight. Like, uh, like I've, I've already won it. You know, that's probably not going to happen, but that's what I, what I'm going for. You know, I want heaps of experience as an amateur, as much as I can get. Um, that's the short term goal, long term UFC belts, whoever's paying the most bunch of cars, <laughs> bunch of houses. That's the long term goal. Um, I just want to win, win fights, be the best and get paid heaps for it. That's the long term goal. All right, man. July 27th, eternal MMA 46. On the Gold Coast. Thank you, Jaden, for your time, man, and uh, good luck on your future. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.